Hey everybody, today I'm going to take a look at this Intellivision two-player plug-and-play system. The second controller right here plugs into the first on the top right there. So if you just want to play single player, you can take it out. Or if you're playing a two-player game and the other player is getting under your skin, I guess you could remove it as well, although I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, you have the power on off switch right there. You turn on little red light indicator. It does work. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Runs on four AAA batteries, not AA as some plug and plays use. You have an analog stick that's kind of stiff. It's not that uh, comfortable to use. A D-pad that's like a bowl shape. Kind of goes inward. Start select buttons. Four buttons right here. You also have a home button that basically resets the system and takes you back to the main menu so you can select another game but you have to wait for the opening animation which is a little bit of a minor irritation and you have your standard rca cables with the mono audio out as well so let's go ahead and take this two-player plug-and-play system let's hook it up to my tv and see how it holds up today let's go to the games the Intellivision X2 video game system two-player plug-and-play was published by Technosource and carries a copyright year 2005. The system contains 15 games accessed by a standard menu screen. I believe the system uses NES on a chip technology, meaning these games were programmed to operate on a Nintendo, not an Intellivision. So you may notice some differences in the graphics and the sounds compared to the originals. Several games offer two-player simultaneous gameplay, even if the originals didn't allow for it. The first game is Astro Smash, the classic rock blasting game. Then we have Space Armada, a Space Invaders clone that seemed to really turn up the difficulty for some reason. Night Stalker, another classic in television game. Buzz Bombers, a unique take on the Centipede game formula. Beach Volleyball, a hard to control version of Spiker's Super Pro Volleyball for the Intellivision. Tennis, which honestly was better than I expected. Soccer, which played pretty decently, although it's going to take me some more practice to actually score a goal. Long Drive Golf, which as the name implies, is a one-on-one -on -one longest drive competition and not a full golf game, which doesn't make much sense to me. Pinball, which I enjoyed on the original television, but I did have a hard time using this one. Maze Shoot, a game where you shoot arrows in a maze to defeat enemies. And Space Gunner, where you move a cursor to blast spaceships. Both of these games are based on the original television game Sharp Shot. And in my opinion, these two games shouldn't count as individual titles. Then we have Frog Bog, the classic two-player game, which I found incredibly hard to control on this plug and play. And for the last three games, we have Baseball, Hockey, and Football. None of these are based on the television games, but rather these appear to be based on the old handheld games and were previously included in some of the Coleco plug and play systems, one of which I reviewed way back in episode 51. Including these oversimplified games rather than ports of the original television sport games, which were known for being the more advanced sports games when they came out, really blew my mind. Graphically speaking, for the most part, the games look somewhat close to the originals, but the sound and music were nowhere near as good. However, I will admit to enjoying the opening music when you turn the system on. Family Friendly Wise, the system was recommended for ages 5 and up. At the time I researched on eBay, only new box versions of this had sold for anywhere from $10 to $23, including shipping. So what did I think of the Intellivision X2 plug and play? I like the Intellivision in general, but this plug and play is horrible. When I reviewed the Intellivision TV Play Power Plug and Play in episode 368, one thing that impressed me was how well it controlled. Well, you could throw that out the window here, as the controller is awful. It doesn't always respond well, and to make matters worse, everything can be buggy. I tried some two-player games, but at times the system decided not to allow the second player to play for no reason at all. Then later on it would. Also, the game selection is pretty bad, with six of the titles not being worthy of being called a full game. And some of these games seem worse than before. For instance, Space Armada really increased the difficulty. I have no idea how Technosource could take a single player controller with 10 games, add five more games, a second player controller, and a more elaborate controller, yet come out with a product that was so much worse than their first attempt. But they did. So where am I going to rank the Intellivision X2 plug and play? This one is going to be a contender for the worst plug and play I've reviewed so far. I would play some more Ms. Pac-Man on her cruddy MSI plug and play at 36, but I will put this over the cruddy MSI Space Invaders plug and play at 37, simply because I could play some more tennis and soccer. So out of the 38 plug and plays I've now ranked, the Intellivision 
Intellivision X2 plug and play is falling down all the way to the 37th position. The Intellivision X2 plug and play is a buggy, poorly made mess. If you can, get an Intellivision flashback instead. But that is only one guy's opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter and check out some of my many other videos covering retro video games, toys, mini arcades, plug and plays, and more. At this time, I'd like to thank Michael M. for supporting the show on Patreon. Thank you, Michael. You too can help support the show, gain access to exclusive content, and be able to vote on future games I review by signing up at patreon.com slash noswaregamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswaregamer. Take care and avoid this plug-and-play if you can.